This is a short video just to show how to set up pitch on a standard belt CP head. I'll be using my belt CP. One of these things, you have to have a pitch gauge to be able to do this. It's very difficult to do it if you don't have the kit. I'm going to be using a old landing gear rod and that's just to check the swash is level. And finally, I'll be using a DX7 radio. And I'll be trying to show the settings on that as we go through. First thing to check, of course, is that you have the right uh, settings on the radio and the helicopter. First thing to note is I've unplugged two of the motor wires. I don't want this helicopter starting up by accident and uh, taking a chunk out of me or the wall. The DX7 is in idle up mode, and I'm not sure if you can see that on the screen, but it's a 0 to 100% throttle curve, and my stick is exactly at 50%. So the swash is in the middle of its travel. Now the way to check whether or not the swash is at the right height is to check the end of the washout arms. Now the washout arms are these things here and the ends should be in line. If they are, then your swash is probably at the right height. If it's not at the right height, then undo these links and either turn them clockwise to shorten them or anti-clockwise to lengthen them and lengthen and shorten them by the same amount on all three. That way the swash will rise or lower and keep doing it until you've got those two arms in line. Next thing to do is just make sure that your swash is level. To do this properly you'd actually remove the whole of the head and just keep the swash plate on and in using something like a swash leveling tool or even a piece of solder wound around the main shaft you can see which side is higher and with something like the DX7 radio you can then adjust the um, the sub trims on that channel just to make sure that it's all level. The cheat way with the head on is what you do is you put a bar like this onto the head you balance it on the swash plate and you look at it from the side you need to do it in that direction. You also need to do it in that direction. And if it all looks flat, then you're good for the next step. The next thing I'll show is how you actually measure pitch on a head. A lot of people forget to keep the fly bar level. So if I spin the rotors round, and what we'll do is we'll actually look straight down the blade so I can show you exactly what we're doing. So the next thing to do is to actually check the pitch on the blades at zero pitch. We're actually looking down the blades towards the head, the fly bar is level, is now, and the fly bar is important to have level every time you take a reading because if it's out at all you can see it actually affects the way the blades move. So make sure that it's level every time otherwise you get an erroneous reading. To make sure that fly bar is level all the time, I usually do this sighting onto a skirting board or a window to make sure it's level all the time. Or I've also got a little spirit level that I can actually attach to on the fly bar arms if I want to be really um, precise about it. So the way you use a, the pitch gauge is you slide it on to the blade. It doesn't matter whereabouts on the blade it is. And then what you're doing is you're looking at the top of the pitch top of the pitch gauge compared to the fly bar and you can see that is level with the fly bar and that is reading zero pitch okay if it wasn't reading zero pitch then what we do is we'd adjust these long links that go from the swash plate into the head and I have the titanium turnbuckles installed on my machine here until that blade read zero, we'd spin the head around and we'd do the same thing so both blades are at zero degrees. As this already is, which I'm pleased about because I only set it up last week, what we'll do is we'll move on to the next step. The next step is going to be measure the pitch range of the head itself. First thing I'm going to do is increase my throttle to 100% set that fly bar level again, very important, and slide the pitch gauge onto the blade. 
Now this time we're going to have to um, undo the pitch gauge slightly because we have to move it around. And what I now need to do while keeping that fly bar level is match up the top of the. Ooh, well that's better. I would say that's about right. So I'm getting plus 11 at the top of my head here. If I then reduce the throttle to zero and do the measurement there, exactly the same thing. If I align the level fly bar with the top of this, I can see I'm getting about minus 10, minus 11, which is good. Now, if they're different and you have more positive pitch than negative pitch, then what you need to do is increase the height of the swash plate very slightly by lengthening all three of those links. That moves the swash plate up, which then takes a little bit of the positive pitch away and puts it onto the negative side. If you have more negative pitch, i.e. when it's like this, you have more than when it's positive, then you do the opposite. So just to reiterate that, where you set the head up is make sure the swash is at the height where the washout arms are level. Make sure your swash is level because that's going to help you fly. Get your transmitter with the throttle curve of 0 to 100% or put it into idle up, of course making sure the motor is unplugged. Make sure the fly bar is level. Set your blades at zero pitch. Once you've done that, measure the pitch at 100% throttle and at 0% throttle. And if there's any difference in the two numbers, they should be almost the same, then move your swash plate. If you have more positive pitch than negative pitch, move it up. If you have more negative pitch than positive pitch, move it down. Hope that helps.